Hey guys, it's your girl Coach Des. Welcome back to my channel. So today guys, I feel like today's episode is going to be all about God. And like, I feel like, yes, every other podcast is about God, but today, like the focus really is going to be on our father and really just like how mighty and how powerful he is. So it actually kind of happened by coincidence, like because in the last episode I used the gold mug but in this episode i'm using my silver mug which i crafted and it says what a mighty god we serve right if you grew up in an african-american church then you may have heard this song that goes what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve <laughs> okay that's how it goes <laughs> literally that has been the theme of my life for the last couple of days and what's sad is it should be the theme of my life every day right i know but specifically this has been highlighted not just for me but for other people around me and we're just going to be talking about today how amazing and powerful our god is specifically in the midst of our circumstances specifically how powerful he is to uphold us and to keep us even when you know we feel like our lives are chaotic and when things may be out of control and we're scared we need to just rest on the fact that God is more powerful than all of those things. And in fact, he's like the creator of everything. So why would he not have it under control, right? If you are new here, welcome. My name is Des and here on this platform, I love to inspire Christians to live their lives boldly and righteously through Christ Jesus by helping you understand the power that you have through him and because of him. So with that being said, let's talk about it. Okay, let's talk about God. When we think about this world that God has created and all of the components and parts that work together to make this universe, right? Like the stars, gravity, earthquakes, like, and I'm just speaking on earthquakes that there was an earthquake in California, like literally a couple days ago. But like all of these things, that are a part of our experience as humans, our universe, the galaxies, all of that. And we think about how God's power and his order keeps all of that going, like keeps the earth from just falling out of orbit. And his gravity keeps, you know, us from floating into thin air and just banishing right and when we think about how powerful god is in that way it's like why do we be tripping about or maybe it's just me if god is going to be with us in our small things part of me feels like that could be because we think that god is so big that our small things are like too small of matters for him to really care about or you know it could just be a lack of trust that God can handle all of these things, right? Like maybe we we forget that God is in control of the entire universe and all of the planets and all of this world and its ecosystems. And if he is in control of all of those things, then he should 100% be able to help us with our things. But, you know, I think we just forget that sometimes and definitely guilty of that. And just speaking for myself personally, sometimes it just feels like I create these scenarios in my head of like how things could go wrong. Or if X, Y, and Z doesn't add up this way, then it's gonna end up this way, right? But even as I'm saying that, like when I think about my own life, maybe, and the path that I was on and someone, and I'm pretty sure there are people out there who have done this of like, oh, Desiree does this and she hangs out with these people and she works here. So her life is gonna go that way, right? And if you you know, know my story and my details about like me being a stripper and you know me being on a spiritual journey with tarot cards and just like being so lost having sex before marriage all these things like you would think that that would equal my life being extremely chaotic 
And what's so crazy and merciful about God is that it's not, period. But at the same time, like, you know, sometimes we just create these scenarios in our heads that like life is going to just go so bad. But really, that does not serve us in any way. Like it doesn't make our lives better to think so negatively. And it also doesn't serve our creator that like we think we're being so like cautious and proactive and we're like being so like tedious and on our P's and Q's, but really whole time, like what most of that leads to a lot of times is stress and like you just being like resentful and like just really really stressed out baby like you just be stressed you be looking stressed <laughs> you be looking stressed and everybody around you can tell that you're stressed and everyone can feel that you're stressed like and you know god doesn't want that because for one it doesn't even give glory to him you know for you to be like that like such an overthinker and to be so into your tasks that you're stressed out and the person i think about when i think about that is i believe it was mary i believe it was mary in the bible when she was like preparing all of these things for jesus and then the other woman who i think her name was mary too she was <laughs> prepared she was like at the feet of jesus right and just wanting to be in his presence and hear from him. And like, I think she was like washing his feet or something like that. Like she just was like all into Jesus. If I have the right story and if I do not, and if it's not Mary, don't come for me, but I'm, I'm gonna just say her name is Mary, right? So Mary is like cooking for Jesus and preparing Jesus's dinner plate and cleaning up for Jesus. And she's getting frustrated because she's like, Jesus, like, look at me, I'm doing all of these things, but Mary over here is playing games. Like she's not helping me and stuff. And Jesus is like, you know, I'm not trying to scold you because I'm I appreciate what you're trying to do. And I know that you're doing it from like a from a good place. But like really what matters and really what's more like serving to me in this moment is that you're just like in my company and like just happy to be in my presence. Like all of this other stuff really don't matter. And I just feel like that Mary just was probably really stressed out in her brain. Like she felt like she had to do so many things to keep Jesus happy. And she had to like prepare this and prepare that. And um, instead of just like trusting that Jesus in his presence, like being there was just enough for her life. And like, you know, she really didn't have to do so much in that moment, but. And I think one thing that really stands out in that scenario with Mary is not even that she was doing work for Jesus, not even that she was like preparing a meal for Jesus and stuff like that. And she was just busy. I don't even feel like that was really the problem. When I think about it, I feel like the problem was really just the fact that she was frustrated that up frustrated she was tight resentful like you know that feeling as a wife and if you're not a wife yet baby you gonna know that feeling <laughs> but <laughs> you know the feeling when you're like a wife or a mother and everybody down is, everybody else is like sitting down and having a good time or like whenever your husband's sitting down playing video games and you've been working all day and you like <laughs> and you done wash the dishes you done fold the clothes you done took the dog out like you done did all of these things and he's just like sitting there and you just like, when are you gonna help me kind of thing? I think that was really the problem. Like was just the feelings that she felt behind doing those actions, right? Because that's the problem with us. Like there's a disconnect between like knowing that like God is all powerful and God can do all things and stuff and then like our real lives because we be out here living our real lives and going to work and doing the ministry and if you're not doing ministry then you know you're going to school or you're trying to you know start a business or you know live the dream and do all of those things but on a day-to-day -day basis like you just be really really overwhelmed and not filled with fruits of the spirit like joy and peace and things like that and those are the evidence those are things that show like that god is in our lives that we have his holy spirit within us right because we bear those fruits so if we're not seeing that like that joy that peace that patience and stuff then it's like 
what do we need to do as believers to still be able to do the things that need to be done in our households, for our ministries, for the kids, for the kingdom, your entrepreneurial dreams, like what do we need to do to be able to do those things and still be able to exude the fact that we are believers in Christ who is the Prince of Peace, right? And not just be walking around looking like, like honestly, like prisoners, like, like we're mad, we're resentful. And, you know, just so we could go about our day and just have like joy and a smile and like do the hard things, but do it with contentment. You know what I'm saying? I want that for us. So what I believe that we really need to do is learn how to be still and know that God is God, right? And where I'm getting this particular phrase from is Psalms 46. It reads that God is our refuge and our strength in ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. His, he lifts his voice the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our fortress. When I was reading this verse, because like, let me just be transparent on the day that I was like creating this video and stuff. Um, I was really feeling like really overwhelmed. Like I was feeling really overwhelmed at the fact that like, I felt like I couldn't record videos. Like I just was like, you know, between work, between like at home stuff um like chores like the days just weren't allowing me to really have like that free time to really sit down and focus on this which is something that i really enjoy doing right and so i was kind of just like word vomiting onto a piece of paper and um this is this is the bible verse that kind of came to my mind and it was be still and know that i am god um, and I think, and I think that as well, this Bible verse in particular was made to be like a song. And I believe that it was a song and a declaration that, that people at that time who could sing this song or who knew this song. And then even now for believers today, like we can sing this song or read this song and know that you know, our God is strong and our God is sovereign and powerful. And like the Bible verse says, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. Like even though all of these crazy things are going on around us, by us having that living water that is Jesus within us, like we will not fall, we will not crumble, we will not be overcome by these things. And I hope what I'm saying is like contextually sound, really. I hope that, you know, it makes sense. I have not, you know, really probably done my due diligence of really studying this Bible verse as much as I could have, but baby, guess what? It's helping me, so period. And I stopped at verse seven, but even if you continue reading from verse eight all the way until uh, verse 11, which is where it ends. It says, come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Like, I just feel like this psalm is so powerful and it is powerful because it is really asserting and declaring the power of God, even when there is war around us or chaos around us. Um, and I mean, these things were probably applicable to the time and the people who were in these situations, but for us in our day-to-day -day lives, like, you know, political affairs, long hours at work, 
long family you know conflicts and circumstances like we can apply this to our life and know that that same power that god had then because god is the same yesterday today and you know forevermore like we can apply this today and i think it's really important for us as believers to have bible verses and to read them and to declare them like which i know for me is something that i need to work on and to be more diligent about like just being more in my word and even if it's not necessarily reading like the whole bible but just taking what you have and meditating on that next i want us to look at mark 4 right so i feel like a lot of us know this story if you read the bible um and it is when jesus and the disciples go to the other side that's what it's called they get in a boat and they um cross from one side of a place of land <laughs> i'm thinking because i'm like i i don't know where they were going where they're coming from this is why you should read your bible more but i do know that they were going from one place to another and i do know that they were leaving the place where they were because there was a large crowd around and if you know anything about big jesus he wasn't for like the big crowds and like the fame and stuff especially not when it was when he didn't feel like it was the time like it wasn't like the right time for him to be in the public or to be well known so he's like all right let's bounce like it's too many like <laughs> all i can think of is like paparazzi like people behind you like we out like so i'm gonna read it for us okay <laughs> All right, so Mark 4, starting at verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with him. A furious squall, which is a storm, came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Verse 39 says, he got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And then he goes on to like tell them like, wow, y'all don't have no faith, right? <laughs> As I was reading this Mark 4, y'all, I had a revelation, period, okay. So I had a revelation about the previous Psalm 46 that I just read, right? You know how Jesus says that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, right? And that Jesus is the word of God, right? So in Psalm 46, we were talking about the power of God and how he can calm the waves, right? And, you know, calm the winds and all these things like that, how he has power and control over all these things. Well, now, baby, put it two and two together. <laughs> now in Mark 4, baby, he's literally showing us that. But Jesus is so good that he's not just showing us like his divinity and like how powerful he is, but he's also showing us like his humanity, right? Because Jesus is like the son of God and he came down in human form. He humbled himself, right? So he's in human form. So he's showing us like what we should do as people, but then he's also staying true to his identity as God, like in the same in the same story okay watch this watch this let me break it down so i'm so excited about this i'm sorry because i feel like i feel like i found something okay so like i had already said his divinity was being spoken of in psalm 46 where it says therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging like this is like exactly what was happening with them in the boat with the water right in the storm and jesus like he is not fearing right so in his in his humanity jesus is not afraid jesus is sleeping on the boat and jesus is sleeping on the boat 
because not because the storm like he can't feel the storm not because he's sleeping but because he not only knows the word of god but like he is the word of god and he is god like which is really crazy all at the same time but he was not afraid because he knows the power of god he knows that like no weapon formed against him will prosper or like he knows that you know god is powerful enough to keep him while he's doing the things of god right because he's you know spreading the message um to people so that they can accept him as messiah but he's doing the will of god and he knows that god will protect him in that so he's not afraid in that sense he's not afraid because um he knows that he is god like period but then he also knows the scripture and i feel like as believers like if we knew scripture the way that jesus did and if we not only knew the scripture but had so much faith and belief and hope in the scripture then we wouldn't allow the storms in our own lives to get us so riled up the same way that jesus was calm like we would be that same way you know so i thought that that was really powerful like i thought that that was i thought that that was really beautiful and really powerful that jesus models how we should behave in the face of the storm and then he also modeled how he behaves in the face of a storm like period like all in one situation i just think that that's so crazy i'm saying all of that to say that like we as believers we gotta calm down okay we gotta calm down we have to remember the sovereignty and the power of God. And like, just like how God is just in the midst of our circumstances. And thank you, Holy Spirit. One day God gave me a vision of himself, like about him, right? And it was where like, okay, you guys see like my living room, right? And pretty much in my mind, I just saw everything in the living room like floating off the ground just like hovering and floating and it was all just hovering and floating in its spot and in its spaces and being held up by the power of god like it was god who was making all of these things float and like just um kind of be where they were but it was like, God was telling me that like, he's the sustainer of all of these things. Like all of these things are sustained. You're sustained, my, my life is sustained. My health is sustained. My family is sustained. Our home is sustained. Outside is sustained. The universe is sustained. The planets are sustained. Like all of these things are sustained, are sustained and like suspended by the power of God. And that really like stayed with me because it really gave me a clear visual of like, God has us all in his hands. Like even that song that says like, he's got the whole world in his hands. Like that's what God was showing me. Like I have all of this in my hands. I have you in my hands, I have your family in my hands, I have your dog in my hands, I have your house in my hands, I have the planets in, in my hands, I have this world in my hands, I have the country in my hands. Like all of this belongs to God, all of it. So with that being said, like why do we get so frantic about our day-to-day -day things? Like that's the problem and I truly believe that the solution to that is taking a moment and being still and knowing that God is God. Knowing that God is who he says that he is. Knowing that God is going to do what he said he was going to do, just like how God did what he said he was going to do in Psalm 46 and Mark 4. And if we can like hold on to that 
and just take that little piece of information and place it in our hearts and dwell on it, I think we'll be okay. And I know we'll be okay. And not only will we, will we be okay, but we will exude the fruit of peace. We'll exude more joy. We'll just look happier, baby, okay? You're gonna look happier. We're not gonna feel so resentful. We'll be more patient about certain situations and outcomes. I'm speaking to myself, <laughs> more patient, and you know, we'll be able to exude all of those different things because we have an understanding and a knowing that we are being sustained and suspended in this planet Earth that is literally flying around the cosmos because of God himself okay and if he can sustain the universe child these clouds these hurricanes these storms tornadoes baby he can sustain you too so with that being said guys that is all for today's video oh another thing before i go check out my mug it says what a mighty god we serve yes because we do serve a mighty God. And hopefully this mug will act as a reminder for you that no matter what's going on in your day, no matter what problems you're running into, no matter what you're facing or feeling, just know that we serve a mighty God, the one true God who will literally sustain you in all things. Okay, period, period. Shameless plug, Jesus. With that being said, guys, <laughs> it's your girl, Coach Des. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, please give it a like. Give it a like. Give it a like. Give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment. All those things. Subscribe. All those things, right? Just get tapped into the kingdom. And until next time, be well, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.